Right, hello and welcome back to another video. So this week we're going to be talking about variable rate shading uh, in Unreal and how we can use it to add a little bit of um, optimization uh, and gain back a little bit of performance. So before we get onto that though, a bit of background. Um, one thing that comes up quite a lot uh, when you're talking about performance and optimization for particle effects, um, very much with kind of smoke and large effects that cover a lot of screen space, is a thing called a half res buffer. Um, and effectively, what happens when your engine is drawing the, the scene, uh, it will draw the opaque geometry, uh, and it could just draw all of the translucent geometry on top of it. Um, that's how Unreal handles things natively, um, but there's possibly a better way. If we don't need much quality within this, something like smoke, you can get away with a smaller um, kind of resolution, uh, slightly a blurrier uh, thing. Um, what you can do is you can take the same image uh, or kind of like your um, your smoke um, here I've just taken that taken that image uh, downsized it and effectively what you can do is you can render it uh, at half scale half resolution uh, and then just um, scale it up in the renderer uh, if I do this 200 here we go um, and so what you'll notice, I mean, this isn't the best example because of uh, Photoshop also doing compression and all sorts, um, but effectively what you get is a lower resolution buffer for your sort of smoke or translucent uh, elements that can be afford to be a bit blurrier, um, especially if they're something like full screen, um, they're going to be quite expensive in terms of your overdraw, how much they're, they're filling the screen. Um, and so what you can do is you can do a render to a half res buffer and then upsample that uh, to fill the screen and you'll get a, a slightly cheaper result um, by using that smaller smaller buffer. Now this is something that I believe Frostbite does, or at least has available to it, uh, but it's not something that Unreal can do natively. Um, so you'd have to go in and make custom engine changes to that if that was something you wanted to support. Uh, but what it does have is a feature called variable rate shading. Um, now looking at the documentation for this, um, unfortunately it only really appears here, as I sort of mentioned. Um, this is to do with virtual reality or VR headsets. Um, you can do a similar thing where you kind of like change parts of the sort of peripheral vision to render at lower shading rates. Um, and so you can check out some of this stuff here, but it doesn't really explain much about what's going on. But I do have a link to a really good talk, which I will um, show in a bit. Um, so. What does it do? Well, basically, you can either render your pixels in a one by one pattern, rendering every pixel, um, or you can tell the engine to use a variable rate. Uh, and if I open up this material, you can see it's a very simple material, just a, a single channel from a channel packed smoke. Uh, but if I type in rate in here, we have an option here, shading rate. Um, not every GPU will support all of this stuff, so you do have to do a bit of research into what your uh, target hardware is. Um, and what was supported here, but basically we can select from different shading rates. So a one by one, that will render every pixel. Uh, two by two, now we're rendering at that half res buffer, effectively, because we're rendering every other pixel. Uh, and then there is also four by four as well, so that would be a, a quarter res buffer. Um, yeah, um, we can do it non-uniformly, so you can do a two by one rate or a one by two rate. Uh, in this case, my texture is square so everything's done by the one by one two by two and four by four um, and yeah just changing this here will change the rate at which it is drawn to the screen and that's what this example here is so this is my one by one full resolution smoke uh, and you can see well we can see the compression in the texture but we can see a reasonable amount of detail within that if we compare that to this one here try and get the same bit on screen there's definitely a um, a little loss of quality but realistically something like smoke especially if it's thin or if it's kind of like puffy and cloudy um, it can definitely get away with being kind of like that little bit of resolution um, and then this one is the 4x4 and you can really see the crunchiness in here you can see the pixels and so there probably is a loss of quality here that we don't really want um, but for the 2x2 two two, there definitely is um, some advantages so um, very simple to do just change the material uh, and this is done on a, a per material basis um, and yeah we can get a, a, a cost saving so 
talking about cost savings, uh, I wanted to sort of check how much this was. Now this is a bit of a, a crude test, um, but something we can um, can maybe do. So I have here a blueprint, and what this blueprint does uh, is it just spawns lots and lots of planes. Uh, if I spawn 10 with an offset of minus 5, just spawns lots and lots of planes on top of each other. Now we're really dealing with a decent GPU here, modern hardware, modern technology, it's all very uh, optimized already. And so to do a, a sort of stress test, we really need to do something a little bit silly. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put thousands of planes on top of each other and really kind of like, obviously there's nothing else in this scene, um, but really kind of like reduce our frame rate down. Um, and all it is is a quick for loop in the blueprint. If I open it up, um, just do a quick loop. How many things do we want? What's the offset? And um, we're adding a plane and setting the material. Um, and so this then allows us to do some really silly things. And so what I found was a good performance hit was a tiny offset, minus 0.1. Uh, and we're going to do 3,000 planes. Give it a sec to calculate. Um, and you can see it's a almost a volume. I mean, it's a solid box. Um, but if we look through it from this edge here, uh, in fact, we're going to go full screen. So I've just kind of really zoomed in on that. Um, on that sort of volume of planes, um, but now we can have a look at the at the performance. So, I'm going to use stat detailed. Uh, this is a new command. I think they've added relatively recently, but it does the stat unit, stat FPS, stat graph all at once. Um, so, stat detailed is quite a nice way of, of bringing this up. Um, and we're going to do stat D GPU as well. Now, uh, if I just select and lock this, uh, we're going to try and change nothing between our tests. We don't want to move the camera and we don't want to have anything selected. Um, all of those things can cause performance. So just by selecting the box, we're changing the performance values here. So we want to keep everything the same. So I've just locked the, um, the details panel here so I don't have to have anything selected. And we can see here, so if I use the baseline, again, give it a second to recompile. That's the loop 3000 times. Um, we're using the VRS 1024, that's the size of the texture in the um, thing here uh, and it's channel packed so I've just written that in to make it very clear what's happening and our performance our translucency we are getting a 17.7 17.8 milliseconds um, on our on our drawing so that's how many milliseconds it's costing to draw the whole thing uh, if we were doing 60 fps as a target the whole scene everything needed to be rendered uh, in 16.6 .6. so uh, obviously this is crazy expensive um, but obviously we're also doing something really stupid here we're doing 3000 layers of, of translucency but what it does give us is a number uh, and now we can do a comparison so if I change my material obviously leaving everything else exactly the same give it a second to do its 3000 loops uh, and compile and then we give it a sec to um, kind of settle uh, and what do we have here so 17.2 so 17.4 17.2 about 16.9 it's coming down so 16.9 looks about stable um, for the 2x2 two two. if we drop down to 4x4 four four, it's a very minimal uh, difference uh, just making sure that nothing is selected um, here we are, 16.9. The tests I was getting earlier were a little bit better than this. I think maybe the video encoding is also affecting performance. Um, very difficult to do performance tests and also <laughs> record video at the same time. Um, but if we have a look, there we are. So 18.2, 17.0. Okay, what's this? 17.8. So we're looking at maybe about a millisecond. So not a huge saving. For sure, um, but definitely a saving that is there. So, um, yeah, very easy to put in. Something to think about. Um, maybe you want to try and uh, use that in your own scenes, especially real, real big win use cases for this are going to be the um, sort of full screen things like things like smoke, where it can afford to be sort of lower resolution. Um, cool. Hope that is interesting. If you do want to learn more about it, there is a great tutorial or kind of little video here on YouTube from the uh, Microsoft Game Dev uh, channel. It's from the Gears team uh, at the Coalition. 
um, talking about how they implemented variable rate shading. Now this is obviously a bit more technical, a bit more on the sort of the tech side of it, but it does explain uh, what's happening and how they used it as well. So um, something to be aware of. Do check that out if you want to learn more about the sort of the performance side of it as well. So um, yeah, there it is. Variable rate shading. Very easy to use. You just change it in the in the settings um, but you will get a bit of performance gain for a little bit of loss of resolution um, but a lot of time we can cope with that so um, so yeah hopefully that was interesting and informative as always do um, check out my other content if you want to learn more about materials um, and Niagara uh, I've got some longer form tutorials over on Gumroad and Udemy um, big thanks to all my patrons if for supporting the channel if you want to become a patreon supporter you can go and find me there um, that all makes this possible um, yeah and I'll see you all next time <laughs>